And just like that, the electoral map in 2024 suddenly looks a little less red thanks to a decision by the Florida Supreme Court. Just this week, the highest court in the Sunshine State issued two rulings. First, that the state's constitution does not protect abortion rights, which means that its 15-week ban is constitutional, and which also means that Ron DeSantis' draconian six-week ban will be allowed to take effect in 30 days. And obviously, the implications for such a dangerous law are beyond clear. But the flip side is that voters will have the chance to overturn it, and soon. Because the second ruling handed down by the Florida Supreme Court was that an amendment to enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution can go on the November ballot. And the electoral significance of that decision is massive. First of all, if that initiative passes, it would have the immediate effect of undoing this reprehensible encroachment on the personal freedoms of millions of women in the state. In fact, not only that, because Florida is the last refuge in the Southeast for abortions, it would have the added benefit of restoring the state as a destination for women seeking abortions, even from neighboring states. Here's U.S. Senate candidate Debbie McCarcel Powell discussing exactly that. I'm extremely concerned. This is one of the most extreme bans on abortion, a six-week abortion ban at a time where women, most women don't know that they're pregnant without hardly any exceptions to rape and incest. This is affecting tens of thousands of women, not only here in our state, Brian, but also in the Southeast region that have been using Florida as their last uh, state of resort to make sure that they have access to this critical reproductive health care. But aside from the absolutely necessary health advantages that restoring abortion access in Florida would have, the ruling also puts the state of Florida in play in 2024. Think about Ohio. Certainly not a blue state, or even a purple state for that matter. It had identical ballot measures relating to codifying abortion and legalizing marijuana that Florida will have on its own ballot in November. And even in that state, both issues passed by about 13 percentage points. That's not exactly a knife's edge margin. Also keep in mind that Ohio voted for Trump over Biden by eight percentage points in 2020. Florida only voted for Trump by about three and a half percentage points more in 2020, meaning presumably this margin would be even wider in the Sunshine State. Here's MSNBC contributor Tim Miller making that point with regard to yet another state. Let's look at the fact, let's look at Georgia, right? Neighboring state, there's some demographic differences, more black voters in Georgia, I think more college educated white voters in Georgia, so a little bit more friendly demographically to Democrats, but Trump wins Georgia by five in 2016, Biden wins it by 0.5 in 2020, so five and a half point swing. Florida was only a four point win for Biden, or for, excuse me, for Trump, Trump in 2020. And so uh, it's certainly not crazy to think that this could be a state that's in play. And I think that the big question for the for Democrats is, you know, how can they um, use the abortion issue and, and other issues to try to galvanize people towards Biden and try to uh, push them away from Trump? And of course, you can also consider the fact that abortion referendums have passed in seven other states, California, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Montana, Ohio, and Vermont. And uh, not for nothing, but you don't look at a place like Montana or Kansas and exactly think liberal bastion, all of which bodes really well for Florida. And that's to say nothing of the fact that we may also see an abortion referendum on the ballot in Arizona. According to NBC News, groups working to enshrine reproductive rights in Arizona's state constitution say they've already exceeded the signature threshold to put in a constitutional amendment on abortion on the ballot in November, meaning Democrats may be getting an extra boost there as well. And as we've seen, nothing is better at turning out Democrats than turning the election into a referendum on Republicans' draconian abortion bans. And the Biden campaign, for its part, isn't overlooking this opportunity. His re-election campaign manager released a statement saying, quote, Make no mistake, Florida is not an easy state to win, but it's a winnable one for President Biden, especially given Trump's weak cash-strapped campaign and serious vulnerabilities within his coalition. This new extreme abortion ban, one that Donald Trump personally paved the way for, will now amount to a ban for the entire Southeast. Women in need of reproductive care throughout the region now face a choice between putting their lives at risk or traveling hundreds or thousands of miles to get care. And of course, the Biden campaign has the added benefit of actually being able to get that message out, considering they enjoy a major fundraising advantage over Trump, with about $155 million cash on hand compared to under $40 million for Trump. Just last week, Biden pulled in $25 million in a single day during an event with Presidents Obama and Clinton in New York, which was more than Trump raised in December and January combined. And that cash disparity is only expected to get worse for Trump, considering his campaign is being pilfered to cover his legal expenses. And with Trump's first criminal trial beginning on April 15th, those bills are only going to keep piling up. Republicans may have wanted to put their far-right agenda on full display, but they're about to find out what happens when Americans have the opportunity to repudiate their extremism at the ballot box. 
You know what they say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on the screen. And you can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on TikTok. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.